Thank you, Allison, and good morning to all of you here and to those of you who are watching us at home. Welcome to Walnut Hills. It is a place that we call home where all are welcomed, nourished spiritually, and then sent forth to serve. So welcome to Walnut Hills, where we do try and mean all are welcome, and we do go out and serve others in areas of justice and in areas of ministry. So welcome to this um, Ascension Sunday worship of Walnut Hills. I will draw your attention to the bulletin if you have it available. There are some announcements that, are, uh, that we need to cover this morning. Um, if you have any prayer requests, please send those to me at ryan.russell at iaumc.net, and I will get those included this morning. Uh, today is the last high school Sunday school, and so if you are a part of that, um, they will be actually in person here at the church for a breakfast at 1045. So if you uh, haven't let Betty know, please uh, text her, and we will uh, see you all, those of you, at 1045. Uh, vacation Bible School is coming up, and um, I know a lot of people have responded that they are going on vacation, so it's a real need for others of you to step up and, and say, yes, you would like to help. So um, please uh, let me know if you're interested, and, and there's plenty of options of different tasks that can be done, um, whether that's with kids or without, because there's a lot of work beforehand. So please uh, let me know if you'd like to help out with that. Uh, next Sunday, May 23rd, is probably a day that many people have been waiting for. It's, we're going to have in-person worship back here in the sanctuary. So uh, please read the bulletin. There are precautions, or sorry, the, the e-blast uh, that we are going to be, have in place, and so um, that will come out on Wednesday again. Uh, so please check that out before you come to worship next Sunday, and we're so excited to see everybody uh, next week. Uh, Family Promise is going to be starting on May 23rd to the 30th, and that will be hosted at Westminster Presbyterian. Um, please contact Kim Roby if you are interested in helping out at, with our hosting for that week. Um, she does need some help. Uh, Jean Swenson has prepared a, a short video for us this morning uh, to talk about the, social justice, the next two social justice forums for the year. Hey, Walnut Hills. Jean Swenson here inviting you to the last two social justice forums of the year. You probably are aware of the fact that the Social Justice Committee has um, set up 10 Zooms using leaders of um, social justice organizations to speak with you the last five months. Our last two will be this coming Monday, 7 p.m. on Zoom. I'm even gonna guarantee you that the Zoom link is going to work this time. Um, our speaker on Monday night will be Connie Ryan from Interfaith Alliance of Iowa. You've seen Connie on the news. You've read Connie's stuff in the newspaper. She is the go-to person for all things interfaith. And remember those banners in the front of our, our church? One of them says interfaith. We're committed. Come learn more about it. The other Zoom will be on Monday, May 24th, again at 7 p.m., Zoom links are in the e-blast, in the bulletin. They will be resent on both Mondays, so that should not be a problem this time. The 24th will be Reverend Dr. Jacqueline Thompson. She is the pastor of Burns United Methodist Church. She is a black female pastor in Iowa. She has some really great stories, and she has told me that she will be painfully honest with us that evening. You won't want to miss that one. Hope to see you there. Stay healthy, get vaccinated, thanks. The, in the bulletin, you'll see the Zoom link and the meeting ID and passcode. Um, those are also in the e-blast, so please check to make sure that you have the right Zoom link because this is the correct one in the bulletin this morning. Um, last thing is on June 4th, to so save the date, we will be having a summer kickoff event here outside in the church with some marshmallows and s'mores and fire pits, um, and we'll also be doing a, uh, a ra uh, some sort of a, a silent auction type thing with the, for the Simpson Youth Academy uh, students who will be going this, this uh, June. So please put those on your calendar, and we'll see you uh, at that event. 
With that, let us continue with our worship this morning. And as you, uh, just to make sure, that Zoom link and the password, I will put it on Facebook on Monday, shortly before it all starts. So make sure you find the right spot. As Jesus prepares to leave the disciples, he opens their minds and blesses them. The result after he ascends is their return to Jerusalem with great joy and a desire for continually worshiping and blessing God in the temple. What happens when the eyes of our Lord are enlightened? We know the hope that we have been called to as we wait for the Spirit with hope. We celebrate with abandon because we have no other ruler than the one who reigns with love and justice. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing a song. Dare to dance their story, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. Dancing changes us. It transforms us and brings us to life, awakens our senses. Imagine the dreams and the heartbeat and the life stirring in Jesus and his disciples as he readied them for this next chapter of ministry. Dare to dance with dreamers, sing their song. Dare to dance their story, sing out strong. Dare to dance with freedom your whole life long. Dare to dance again. This is the call. Ready yourselves for new life. We lift up our heads to meet the day. Get ready to be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. We fortify our hearts with compassion and action. Even when rain sets in, open those umbrellas with gratitude and set out anyway. For we are called to dance again. Please join us in our opening hymn today, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, and the words will be on the screen for you.
Let us pray. Holy One, justice seeker, lover of creation, help us to put our dancing shoes, put on our dancing shoes, so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus. Come and dance with us, engage with us, as we seek you, so that you, we can be risen with Christ and in Christ. Be with us now, we pray. Amen. The peace of the risen Christ is with you. And also with you. You are invited to greet each other with the love of Christ by standing if you're here, or those of you at home, and wave at each other. This time, if Judah wants to come forward and Maddie, we'll have children's time. And if you can gather the other children at home, around, and adults, if you want to come up, please do. This, this is where children belong, welcomed as part of the worshiping throng. Water gods were bread and cup, prayer and song. This is where children belong. So, what did we do last night? Do you remember? All uh, three of these four adults that are down here were with us last night. Yeah. We went to the zoo and, and to see the, the wild lights. Was, yeah. Was it fun? Yeah. Even my friend came. Your friend came too, across from across the street, yeah. I think it was good. Everybody had a good time that was there last night. And I have another friend behind me. I know. You told me about him last night too. Well, let's look at our picture for today. Who is that person on the screen? Do you know, Judah? Maddie, do you have any idea? Who's that person? Who, who do we come to church for? Jesus. So this is an interpretation of what people, somebody thinks Jesus might look like. It's not actually what Jesus looked like. In fact, Jesus probably looked kind of different than that. But this is somebody's interpretation. So today, our dreamer is Jesus. Do you know why we might be talking about Jesus today? No? What, did Jesus, what was Jesus all about? Being good to people? Yep, teaching us how to be good to people. Yeah. Was Jesus' main goal to make the world a better place mm -hmm. for all people? Yep. Yep, yep. Not like COVID-19. Not like COVID-19. <laughs> so, Jesus did some pretty interesting things when he was alive and teaching us how to be better people, right? He worked with people who, was, who were called unclean, right? So there was, so unclean could be a number of different things, but you could have like, a skin rash on your hand, and that would be considered unclean. Where today, we, would, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't send people away because they had a skin, a little rash on their hand, right? Um, no. I don't know what that means. Well, it's okay. You can ask your mom or dad or grandma later. But he worked with those people and spent time with those people, which was completely against what the society wanted and believed uh, should happen. So he was trying to teach us by his example of how to be in the community and how to work with people that we may not think are welcome to be with us. Not we, but the people at the time, right? Does that make sense? No? Okay, well. So what, Jesus, what was Jesus' dream? To have the world like everybody, yep, and... To accept everybody, yes, good. 
So his dream, he called it the kingdom of God. Have you guys heard that term before? Yeah, you probably have. We say it almost every week in church in some form, especially in our prayer time. We use to say it during the Lord's Prayer. Yeah. So the kingdom of God is where everybody goes out of their way to help each other, especially those who are strangers and those who are suffering in some way, so the sick. Uh, if somebody gets left out, Jesus made sure that he would reach out to them so that they were felt like they were welcome too and, and uh, felt like he cared. So as long as Jesus lived on the earth, uh, he left us and he said to live the way that he did. So, so have we, do we do that here at the church? Do we live like Jesus taught us how to live? Mm-hmm. Yeah, good. So can you get the umbrella, Maddie? Okay, so let's see, Judah, what color do you have? You had that one? Yeah. Okay, so we're... I heard that we did that. We did that, so we should probably get a different one, huh? We've done all the colors, so you just have to pick a different one that doesn't. Okay. Um, so, Maddie, do you want to write it today? Do two today? We're going to write, you want to write one word and then she can write it in two different colors? We could do that. So, it's. Okay. Maddie, to d- Okay, today's word is welcome to all. You can write welcome. Can I do two? You can write two and all. Can you write two? Good. T O, yep, and then A. I know. Okay. <laughs> Good job. I know how to spell. <laughs> it's okay. I like. I know how to write. Good job. Out. Thank you for helping. And and he knew how to spell it. I didn't need to help him. If those of you at home didn't hear him, let us pray together this morning for during children's time. Repeat after me, okay? We offer thanks. We offer thanks. For dreamers true. For dreamers true. For all they are. For all they are. And all they do. And all they do. Let us become. Let us become. Dreamers too. Dreamers too. And bring new life. And bring new life. To me and you. To me and you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Maddie. Our first scripture reading today comes from Psalms 41, 1 through 6. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a a great sovereign over all the earth. He subdued people under us and nations under feet. He chose our heritage for us the pride of Jacob, whom he loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. Sing praises to our sovereign. Sing praises. For For God is the king of all the earth. Sing praises with the psalm. Our second reading comes from Acts, Acts 8, 26 to 39. Then he said to them, These are my words that I have spoken to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms may be fulfilled, or must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And the repentance, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations. Beginning from Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what Abba, God, promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power 
from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. beautiful, Maggie. Thank you. Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Can you imagine the roller coaster of feelings the disciples have been through? I mean, Jesus, about three years prior to this scripture reading, sees them and asks them to follow him. I mean, he may have performed some miracle in front of their eyes, um, or he may have just looked at them and truly seen them and made them feel loved and not judged because of who they were or what they've done. So they pick up and they follow this guy around the surrounding country. They go to places they would never have gone to. They did things with people the religious people of the time had told them were untouchable and changed their view of what God asked of them. They followed him into Jerusalem for Passover and the worst thing happened that they could, well, they couldn't even imagine. Jesus was arrested and tried and crucified. What were they to do now? 
the pain of Jesus' death hit them as it hits us. And they wanted to be together, to support each other, and to grieve. They were also afraid. They were afraid for their own future and their own lives. But then, the resurrected Jesus came to them, and they were in disbelief and relief and joy. And I'm sure they were going, what in the heck does this mean? But then he leaves them again. This time, with the promise of something that will go with them and guide them and empower them to continue to spread God's love in the world. A promise. Wow. Woo. I'm glad I didn't do that three year roller coaster. Three years in their lives of extreme changes that changed them forever. Well, I haven't gone through that roller coaster, but I think we've all gone through a roller coaster ride of feelings this last 15 months. Fear that we or a loved one would be getting COVID-19. Grief when someone we cared about died. Anger that we couldn't celebrate their lives in the normal way that we're used to. Anger at those who didn't believe it, and that it was really serious, and those who thought it was, we were being too serious about the pandemic. COVID brain fog, COVID anxiety, COVID depression, COVID frustration. Change, change, change. Frustration at all the adaptations that were needed. The feelings around not seeing the ones we love. We have had to adapt over and over and over again. We have been, had to be creative over and over and over again. And we have grieved over and over again. But throughout this last 15 months, we have trusted in God's spirit to go with us, to guide and empower us, to continue to spread God's love in the world, even with all the restrictions. 15 months in our lives of extreme changes that have changed us forever. But what now? Can we dare to dance with freedom our whole life long? Can we dare to dance again? After Jesus' death, the disciples went back to what was familiar. They went back to fishing and to doing what they could to make ends meet. They hung around the area of Jerusalem so that they could be together even after the coming of God's spirit into their lives, they stayed with what they knew and met together to encourage one another. It's what we humans do. We know some of the disciples stayed around home and established the church in Jerusalem and tried to figure out what the boundaries are of this experience of Jesus but others went into the known world and spread the teachings of Jesus and shared God's love with all people. The early church struggled to figure out what it meant to be a follower of Jesus. Who was included? Even those Gentiles? And what did they need to do to be included? Did they have to follow those rules of the Jewish faith? Or not. I think we in the church will have a similar struggle. The traditions we do not need, the tra what traditions do we need to let go of for our future? What fears of our own do we need to let go of? Trusting in God and maybe 
trusting in the scientists again. I can tell you that, that the first time I took off a mask in a place where I'd always had to wear one was kind of weird. What will Walnut Hills do? Will Walnut Hills go back to worship with a large group gathering in person here in this space every Sunday? Will you attend? Probably most of you in here will, but will you attend? In Walnut Hills' future, can we let go of some of the expectations of what worship will look like, of how many people will attend, what small groups look like, what ministry looks like? How will Walnut Hills continue to change to live out the mission statement in brand new ways? A place where all are welcomed, nourished spiritually, and sent forth to serve. Will we focus on those in the building or those online? And can we do both? Will our expectations of what Walnut Hills is limit our outreach to others with God's love? We need to hang on to the past but not so tightly that it controls our future. With the reading that I've been doing, the church is going to look very different. Attending church in person, the numbers will go down. Even some of you will choose to worship online at times because it's just different or you're gone. The new future is reaching people online and then drawing them into participation in the ministries. Many predict that the new membership of a church will not be regional or just the Des Moines Metro for us. It will be people around the country who find in our mission statement and God's call for us that they want to be members of this congregation. How do we deal with that? I mean, to me, that means that studies and small groups need to not only be in the building, but there need to be some that are online. It means our justice outreach will continue in the Des Moines Metro and at the state house, but needs to be supported by small groups who support uh, what other people are doing in justice ministries, even if they're not in the Des Moines Metro or even in Iowa. Can we support people online who are doing the same kind of justice ministries in their location as we are here? It means our helping ministries outreach needs to be supported in the Des Moines Metro. But those who are joining us online, if they're in the region, can come and help support that. But we may also need to help support and encourage them to do it where they are. Walnut Hills can have active ministries here and online, wherever people live. We are in this transition time, like Jesus and the disciples in Acts. They had no idea what their future was going to look like. They just stepped into it. They danced into it. And it might get rocky at times, because it is going to be different. And many including myself, are afraid of change that I can't visualize or grab hold of in my brain. But it can also be very exciting. It can be very exciting to think about new possibilities, to think about how to reach out to people through 
the mechanisms we've been reaching out to each other on. And the promise is we don't go into this future on, uh, alone. God's spirit of love goes with us. God's spirit of peace goes with us. God's spirit is with us. And it's God's spirit that gave the disciples, those original disciples, the courage to face the future. It's God's spirit that gave the disciples the courage to challenge some of their own beliefs of what it meant to be a part of the church. Can we trust? Can we discern where the Spirit is leading? I know we can. This church was built by people who wanted to share God's love for all. This church was built on loving those who others were afraid of, who needed to experience God's love no matter who or where they were. This church was built by trusting in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Jean trusted deeply the founding pastor. He did. And he did things that seemed a little odd at the time. But now they seem just right. Empowered by God's spirit, Walnut Hills will literally go into the world spreading the good news of God's love. We can dare to dance with freedom our whole life long. We can dare to dance again with the power of God's spirit. May we dare. Amen. For the beauty of the world in all its diversity, we give thanks, O oh God. Let us pray together. We thank you. And we thank you that Kimbra's sister in law, Patty, is doing well and is at home. We need your healing, O oh Holy One, for our troubled planet, for our nation. For all of those who are struggling in body, mind, relationships, and spirit, remember those who are suffering. We continue to pray for Kyle and Allison Nielsen and their family in the death of Kyle's mother, Kathy, from cancer. We continue to pray for Bev's friend, Leisha, who is receiving chemo and still teaching. We pray for, Kel for 13 year old Kelvin, who is a friend of the Clarks in Florida who fell down a, stair, a set of stairs and is now in the hospital in Texas. We pray for K Gail and Susan's friend, Carrie, who was diagnosed with stage four cancer. We pray for Beth, Devin's sister. We pray for Mike Bainey's sister in Michigan, who is in the hospital and is not doing well. We pray for the sheriff's friend, who is in a troubled relationship and needs prayers as she tries to figure out how to get out of it. We pray for the Mormon's friend, Joy, who is in hospice care. We pray for the family of, of Sue and for Rose's family uh, due to the death of her mother, um, Sue's mother, uh, who is a neighbor of theirs for 43 years. We pray for Sandy Schatzberg's friend, Casey, who is continuing to struggle with alcoholism. We pray for Michelle's cousin, Vivian, who is being treated for skin cancer, and Lori and Paul, who are both dealing with COVID-19, and for Mark, who is recovering from gallbladder surgery. We, uh, we offer prayers of healing for Peggy, who is in the hospital 
and is receiving IV antibiotics. And we pray for Matthew's friend Adam and his, uh, his family uh, at the, due to the, the death of Adam's mother, Kate, this last week. And we pray for Matthew as he cares for Adam uh, at this time. Let us pray together. Come, O God, and restore our lives. Teach me to pray in the power of Easter, following Christ in a life resurrected. Teach me to act with compassion and justice. Teach me to dance with the beat of your heart. Be with each of us now. May the dance of your spirit ever call us to engage with you and with the needs of those around us. Lead us, guide us, surround us, and fill us. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us, us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Teach me to As we come now to give our offering, I would remind you that your gifts are used to help make this, help continue this ministry, to send it throughout the, the universe by all of these means. Your offering helps us to continue to reach out in, to, in love to dance with the God's spirit, to tell people no matter who has rejected them or how inadequate they feel, they are loved by God. Come and be generous to God. You can do so either through sending a check to uh, Walnut Hills address or you can do so by going to our website and hitting the offering button. Or you can do so by um, the app, the giving app. Come, be generous to God who is so generous to us. Next week is the last week of Easter. For this season ends with Pentecost, when the flames of the Spirit danced with all people. We are so grateful for the ways in which you've continued to work through this difficult time of being separated. You have continued to support and give life and movement to these ministries in this church. You have been the hands and feet of Christ now in the world. Thank you. Please join us in our closing hymn, I Cannot Dance, O oh Love.
The poet Rumi invites us with these words. Dance when you're broken open. Dance if you've torn the bandage off. Dance in the middle of the fighting. Dance in your blood. Dance when you're perfectly free. May it be so as we go in peace. And may the loving God, the risen Christ, and the dancing spirit fill you with all you need for the days ahead. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen.